Uh, today we have a couple of things. We had a, um, a drawing for a tumbler, which you'll see later, and um, a few other things about what's going on with the company. Um, but today I want to talk about the ball call. I know last time I told you that I was going to get into what made me th think of the ball call uh, and the aspects of what goes into the design of that. And I guess we'll start off with the warthog. Uh, most people assume that when they say ball call, they mean the warthog model. Uh, it's kind of true, kind of not. It is the ball call warthog, but most people that order the warthog just say they're ordering the ball call, and um, that's the one that they assume um, that they're ordering. Um, but it is actually the warthog, which is the tannish, sandish color um, dial. Uh, my original reason I wanted to make that one because I wanted to make the ball call a kind of a vintage line. I'm making it kind of a uh, well, vintage, to give it a sand look, something that you wouldn't see in the Harbor Master. Uh, the Harbor Masters are a lot more formal and luxurious, bright colors and stuff, and I wanted to make the ball call a lot darker. Although there are some brighter colors in the ball call, most of them are PVD and darker um, darker colors to give it a little more of a military look to it. We wanted a pilot edition, uh, but we wanted to stay in, within our maritime instruments um, slogan, so we went with like a naval um, pilot thing. That way you still you keep the water and you can introduce a pilot model with it. Having a rotating bezel will allow you to quickly and easily make timing adjustments and adjust accordingly and figure out exactly the elapsed time you need. And so a bi-directional, which we're putting in the ball call, allows you to turn it either way so you don't have to continually always turn it into the, uh, in the counterclockwise direction. You can go clockwise or counterclockwise. And with the uh, index um, screw the top with a different color as a bezel, it'd be easy to uh, locate um, your index. The uh, Warthog was designed to be the dark one uh, with a vintage look to it, so we introduced the sand color loom to it and we named it the Warthog because of the A10 Warthog um, used in Desert Storm. The Warthog A10 is not a naval plane. That's right, it is an Air Force plane, but when you think of desert, when you think of sand, a lot of times when you think of vintage, you think of something that has to do well with the desert. And with desert colors and in the loom, there's only really one plan that came to mind, at least in my mind and most other people's, and that's the 18 Warthog. We offset the hand loomed uh, to make it easier to see the hour hand and the minute hand at the same time. A lot of times you see hours and minute hands when they overlap you find yourself, especially at night, looking for the hour hand, uh, knowing it must be around there somewhere because you can't see it. So it must either be too dark, uh, the loom has faded away or something like that, so that you're just constantly looking for it. This way, with the offset loom colors on the hands, one, it allows the hour hand to have more loom on it. Instead of the smaller point on the hand, it allows it to have a, a lot more loom in it, so it'll be a lot brighter. Um, the Harbor Master stayed bright throughout the night, but these were going to stay brighter on the hands um, that way. And you know that if, if you can't see the hour hand, it must be behind the minute hand. But with our with our layout, you'll see the hour and minute hand come together like that, and then there actually be if they're right behind each other, you actually see one big long glow streak. The sub second hand uh, is something we wanted to introduce in the ball call. We didn't do it in the Harbor Masters and. Now we're glad we didn't. Uh, we're going to keep the Harbor Masters as a three hand design, center second, and the ball calls would be the sub second models. Uh, it adds a lot more military pilot look. You know, most military uh, pilot watches have a sub second hand, so that's something really important we wanted to introduce and keep into the ball call. Uh, the Warthog is very plain looking. There's no minute indices except for the five minutes around it. Uh, you get the 12, 3, 6, and 9 to there. Um, it's very vintage looking, uh, black, 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 um, black case, black dial, black leather. And then you have the sand numbers indices and the stitching on the, um, on the strap. So that's one of the, that's our darkest model and that's the one that's the most vintage and the whole reason I made the ball call series was kind of involved around that one model. Can't work every day, I just go out to the hobby store and with family and 
some kind of toys we can look at today. Kind of a kind of hard getting everybody ready to go. Every time we go to Ross, it just starts piling up the stuff. Everything is so cheap. Everything is so cheap, you just start putting stuff in and don't know how much you end up with until you get to the cash register. <laughs> Today I'm going to be doing um, quartz uh, movement into the Jinniker. Um, we now offer the uh, Jinnikers in our quartz movements as well. It's a nice, really nice Swiss ISA. I'm gonna take this, uh, this automatic um, movement out of here and put it in a, a Swiss quartz for our customer. next one I designed was the 1974. We wanted a female version of this watch. Uh, 44 millimeters on a female is getting very popular lately. Um, a lot of the females were our spinnakers for her, uh, which is the same case, the 44 millimeter case. And it's not really that big once the the lady gets accustomed to it. Um, most of the time they're, they're wearing really itty bitty tiny watches and they don't know what time it is. So they look at their watch and they don't have a clue because they can't even see their hands on it. So we wanted to create a watch for a female that had a lot of class to it, kept the darkness of the ball call, made it kind of in your face, bam, wow, you know, bam, wow, you know, bam, wow, you know, uh, a lot of pink and a lot of black. Um, for the spinnaker for her, in the Harbor Master, we used the uh, baby blue, uh, sky blue with the pink and the white leather strap. For the ball call series, for, um, for the female one, we made in 1974 with black and a pink. That was probably my favorite one to design, actually. Give it something that men don't necessarily want. Men like plainer things, um, but women enjoy something that's just fantastic out there, you know, and very symbolistic. So I was able to play around with a lot of fonts, you know, and really give it that the edgy look in pink and black that a lot of men actually like too, but. Really, sometimes it's just too embarrassing to um, admit it, actually. We have actually pre-ordered a lot of these for men. Um, I don't know if it's for them or their wives, but either way, I'm most likely to be wearing one, too, because it does look really good. Uh, we made it with a target rectangle to kind of uh, symbolize, you know, a female pilot. Uh, and so their center second hand is tucked down into the number seven area, but the target rectangle brings all the way out um, halfway throughout the face, so that really gives it a really broad pink area uh, and uh, a large target uh, zone. And we named it 1974 because throughout history, uh, women in general are not really allowed to be fighter pilots. And in 1974, um, the Navy allowed 
the first women to be, uh, get their wings. And so we thought we'd recognize that moment in time in history and name our female ball call the uh, 1974 model. And just a uh, side note, uh, the ball call for those who don't know, uh, when a pilot calls a ball on approach to an aircraft carrier, that means that he uh, does have sight of the uh, ball or light reflection uh, on the aircraft carrier. And so when he is able to see that, that allows him to adjust his elevation and trajectory to land safely on the aircraft carrier. If you cannot see that, it is very difficult and most of the time impossible to land on the carrier, and especially at night. Uh, so when they uh, call the ball, it means they do have visual contact at that ball and it allows them to um, guide themselves in. So that's the ball call. Next time we'll talk about the other models, the power reserve, the automatics, and the uh, special blue angels um, that we're doing. Thanks for watching and look forward to talking with you next time and telling you more about the ball call series. Well, here's the, uh, the Tumblr winner here for the contest we had uh, a couple months ago, actually, it might have been a month ago, when we asked for your story of when a female had uh, pretty much complimented you on your watch. Uh, we didn't have too many entries um, on that. Uh, we had three entries here, and what we'll do is we'll put these in here for you. There we go. We have, uh, we have Lynn Ostro, Jake Ostro, and Clyde Poe. We'll do a quickly randomize here with uh, one winner here. And we'll get ourselves a winner real quick. Clyde Poe, hey, you won. You got yourself a Tumblr. Uh, just give, send us an email with your, your uh, address and we'll ship it right out for you.